How's it going guys and gals? This is Advanced Warrior here and welcome back to another uh, Tiny Wars Days of Ruin replay commentary. I almost said Advanced Wars uh, by Webfair. Uh, if some of you guys are wondering, I do still play Advanced Wars. I try my best to be active on both games because I just love the Advanced Wars online experience, whether it's Advanced Wars by Web or uh, Tiny Wars. And I really like Tiny Wars a lot. It's, it feels a lot more smoother to play than Advanced Wars by Web, but I still like them both. So, uh, if you could probably already tell from the, uh, the thumbnail or the title, I am not playing uh, Isabella uh, for this game. Although we do have the return of one of the COs from the past replays. So, our, so I'm player one, and the CO that I played with is... The enemy! Not again. First Will, now, now, I'll get back to your game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fire Emblem fans. I'll, I'll get back to your game. Okay, so, <clears throat> Lynn, she is what I would consider the ground specialist uh, commanding officer. Uh, she has a zone radius of one, which, uh, in my personal opinion, my uh, playthrough, uh, the way I play Tiny Wars, it's kind of small for me, but we'll see how I make it work. Obviously, 3060 zone expanding uh, her day to day. She has the vanilla 10% uh, offense and defense on the default CO zone, but all her ground units gain 20% offense and defense, and that stacks with the CO zone, so they're all getting 30, which is pretty good, I would say. Probably a good reason why the uh, zone is only one. Um, yeah, she is the, uh, the ground uh, CO specialist. Uh, some people can make it work with the one uh, zone radius, whether it's just moving uh, your CO unit next to an attacking unit to get that bonus, or you could probably use indirects. I think indirects uh, for Lynn are pretty alright if you want to get a, a good start with your CO zone and expand it to two, where you could do a lot more with. Uh, Units attacking a single enemy diagonally. And her CO power um, obviously expands the uh, her CO zone all over. So 10% uh, offense and defense for non-ground units and 30% for all the ground units. And all units gain... Oh no, it just says ground units? <clears throat> okay, ground units gain two vision and can see through... A hiding spaces so not only is she the ground specialist but she is also kind of the fog of war uh expert i would say i'm like i almost said she was uh, something like sonja but uh, not really no no days of ruin uh characters have any weaknesses to speak of all right so we covered mine now let's cover tabitha once again Oh boy, Tabitha. Uh, zone ready starts off in zero. Um, so only the unit that she's in is going to get that buff, but this is a huge 60% offense and defense to that one unit. And with, with so much damage, you can just stack up your CO zone pretty fast, and then you can have like this little death ball that you could just like probably march through and um yeah it's uh I, I don't think uh this because the bonus is so big i don't think the co zone radius isn't as much of a huge problem like lin ground units only get like half of what tabitha have has so i think it's only fair that starts off very small can only go up to two if you expand the zones but her c her co power I think is pretty good, even though I haven't seen it happen yet. Um, obviously, the uh, radius CO zone uh, goes global. Everyone gets 60% offense and defense. And she deals an 8 HP damage missile to all units in a 2 tile radius. Randomly targets highest HP or fund enemy units. Uh, <clears throat> there's probably a way to play around that but I don't have enough Tabitha experience to 
do such a thing. But I can see this as a game ender. Like, you could probably just keep your uh, CO zone the way it is until you feel like you're going to make a good, a good push to weaken a bunch of enemies, buff your own, and just try to kill everything and swing the victory in your favor. But, Tabitha. <clears throat> Interesting CO. I got a player. I got to try her out. All right, so the map is called Iconic. Um, there's like mountains in the center. I believe uh, these two bases here, all, all, all the grayed out ones should be uh, should be already owned. So we already have a city. It's already nice. You could dig out a bike and an infantry, which I think we end up doing. Their side is obviously here. Uh, I guess this could be the player two stronger side, player one stronger side, and they'll and the weaker sides will have to defend player one to the right, player two to the left. Com towers in the corner, airport in the middle. So I guess without further ado, let's begin. <clears throat> Lin has an amazing theme, by the way. So as I say, I produce a bike and an infantry. Uh, first, first thing though. I, I think I probably could have saved a bit more because if I had an infantry, I, I can get this base in the same amount of turns it would take this bike to get to uh, this base. One, two. All right, I'm sorry. One, two, three. Then one, two, three. Because we could walk on these shoals. Although, if I get, although with this bike, I could get this base and then I could capture something else close by. So I guess in that way it worked out. Uh, here my opponent uh, makes a mistake and he did tell me this. He said that uh, he accidentally moved his infantry away from his base, which he initially planned to do. But um, mistakes like this happen. Uh, it's just a matter of if you can recover from it. Alright, so my turn. I capture the city because obviously it's in range. And this bike, yeah, it would have gone down easier. It goes around the shoal because they're because bikes are horrible on shoals, I believe. Like if I click on this and go to bikes, uh, they have a movement of five. Oh, wrong one. So I could click on the beach, right? And bikes costs it costs two moves for bikes, two movement costs for bikes on the beaches. So uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of things hinder uh, bike movement, especially like this wasteland here. Costs them three, same as a recon, and an anti tank, and missiles. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Days of Ruin has interesting ways to balance uh, bikes in in their maps. Three movements for bikes as well. It's like you think bikes are amazing until you realize that there's some terrain that stops you from doing all that. So my opponent, Isa, he recognizes that he's lost, missed out his, on his base, but has a bike and infantry. I stick with two infantry actually, because I know I can capture this airport and this uh, city on the next turn. Maybe have a little extra money. <clears throat> I don't think a bike would have been able to reach this. All right, I get, now I get two bikes here. Probably gonna go for something big. Finally gets his base, gets the city chain, nice little city chain. Moves his bike. I thought this was a little aggressive when I first saw this. I was like, he really just moved his bike here. Like, I'm trying to play it a bit safer, but he's going out. And this is something that I've been trying to do in my own game, personally. It's just be more aggressive with my capturing. Because I've noticed that I tend to capture all my backs so I could get my guaranteed cities. And then I just end up going in the more contested properties and they're already, they're already in the middle of capturing them. And I can't interrupt it because it's fog. So, yeah. Um, I, I think this fear happened because I have missed uh, cities in the back and I tried to fix that mistake but I guess uh, that one mistake is making me play too passively. Produces more bikes as well. Alright. Oh, did I say the map name? Iconic. All right, obviously I'm just uh, capturing what I can. Oh, this city's already captured. What am I doing? I, I thought I sent an, a unit to go back there. But yeah, I got an obviously same nice little chain. And I produce a bunch more bikes. I'm going to wait till he captures uh, all three of these. How are we on income? Uh, 
buildings. He has one more building than I do. That that extra infantry probably helped. And again, he's just like moving his bikes out here. And we're both doing the same thing, obviously capturing the comp tower, which is 5% uh, attack and defense bonus. Uh, not, um, I guess not too terrible. Considering, uh, considering although uh, plus 10% attack is uh, really nice, which is what I think makes comp towers fun in uh, Days of Ru in Dual Strike and uh, Advanced Wars by Web. So here I am capturing the same city, sort of, as my opponent, but just a turn later. Yeah, you can see uh, they're more aggressive, and you just saw this um, this vision spike that just happened because. This infantry walked on the mountain. The way uh, fog works in Days of Ruin is if it, it almost assumes that you would stop at every single tile you walked across. So notice how some of these cities are uh, fogged out because um, in Days of Ruin you cannot see what's in a city until you reveal it. You could just walk by or drive by a city and it will reveal the unit inside. Forests, wasteland. I forgot how he got this. Maybe this bike might have seen it. Ruins, I'm sorry, but yeah. All the hiding spots, they will be revealed if you just move past them. And I actually do like this mechanic. Moves in this forest, moves this bike up. Pushing out, I would say better than I am. I got this. I'm about to get my comm tower first, but I don't think I'll be seeing any combat anytime soon. And I build a recon. Uh, this was kind of weird of me, admittedly, because I am trying the uh, get your tank out first before your recon. I forgot what my funds were, but um, my opponent bought a flare before a recon. Flares are a thousand more, but I think they're a lot better because they can just reveal. A whole area without you even being near near there. So I capture this building, capture another building, move my recon out, maybe see if there's anyone trying to go through the mountains. I start capturing these uh, further out cities. Capture my comm tower, move this unit on the mountain, maybe see if anyone's going to aggress. Capture this city, move this bike out, and I buy my own flare. Okay, now I can kind of see what I was doing. I was attempting to put this recon here and use it on my defensive side and have my flare out for my more uh, offensive side. I think, yeah, this was exactly what I was trying to do. Uh, is he done capturing? All right, it is turn six and we are even on buildings. I am. We're, I'm not ahead yet on units because he has to build his units first. So it doesn't have the vision range, but it's not going to see uh, this city regardless. But he put a flare in a pretty nice spot, I will say. I will have to I'll have to drive past this force or spot this out with my recon. If I'm going to get anything out of it. And he builds a tank before I do. So. We are... He has... Uh, one more unit than me, and it's 15, no, not 1,500 more. That's like 5,500 more. Oof, I really am, uh, I am kind of behind on the funds. So it looks like uh, we might have some action going on here. Recon, obviously, it's not going to spot out any of this. I, I tried to, uh, peek out. I see, uh... See, he's captured the city, I kill this infantry. I move my flare almost in the same spot. This little area here is kind of choke pointy, I would say. And I finally build my first tank. And I build an artillery. Um, like I said... <clears throat> oh, he got the flare. But uh, like I said, uh, Lin's seal zone is so small. I think if you want to get value off of it from more than one unit, your CO unit will have to be diagonal to the attacking unit and just have two other units uh, almost pincer attack it I hear that's what's been called or like I said you could use uh, indirects which I think I tried to do here he has a flare spots on my tank he knows I have a tank he's moving up 
uh, gets trapped, and the bike is just enough reach to interrupt my cap. So yeah, this was kind of sad. And he puts his uh, unit here. This is going to be dangerous. He has these cities. I don't have this city. It's already looking bad for me. But we will obviously see how this goes. Oh, so I boarded my CO and I spot out his CO unit. I was like, oh dang. Well, I could probably just make something, make something happen now. And uh, I capture... I, I capture uh, this city, and I block... I don't know if I block it or not, but I obviously cannot see these two down here. Move my tanks down. Can my bike cover? No, I don't cover my bike. I protect my city up here. Which I probably should not have done and just used to protect this city. I think I killed something up here? And my recons, they can contest all these bikes in infantry. Infantry just moves one space because I don't want to be spotted, obviously. I want to interrupt this cap if he ever goes for it. And, um, goes for these aggressive kills. He can not spot out most of my units here. Flare comes by, takes out this tank. And CO tank obviously wrecks, uh, wrecks my bike with a one shot. Just flares out my base again. Yeah, he's in a really good spot right now. Produces an anti air and a tank and a bike. Turn 9. Uh, he has one more ability than me. And he has two more units than me. I gotta make something happen here. <sighs> I thought I was doing okay, but now I'm just seeing how horrible, uh... How horrible I kinda did up here. <laughs> Obviously, uh, artillery on the city. Grants defense and grants, uh... Hidden... It stays hidden. Use my flare a little late, admittedly. I think my unit on the mountain, I can already see this. I have an empowered artillery, and my tank is uh, has defense, even though there's on the unfavorable road tile. Flare's on my whole area. Has a tank going up here. Flare can just resupply itself. Artillery is now exposed, but doesn't go for it yet. Now he goes for it. And Tabitha tank just completely wrecks my my art, not artillery, my um, my tank. Uh, Anti-air coming in. I haven't built one yet because he hasn't built a copter. Builds two tanks and the bike starts capturing the city. Uh, my turn, turn ten. I flare out this. I see that artillery, empowered artillery deals four damage to that. And uh, I just move my helicopter down. Uh, try to like hurt some of the units here. I'm just moving up, preventing this capture. I try my best to kill this uh, infantry on the uh, on the mountain. Probably had a good chance to do that. Anti tank. All right. So I guess I built this in response to this tank and possibly more tanks trying to come in. Two tanks up here. Flare reveals this whole top side. Kills my recon. Tanks are still hidden though. Pulls his uh, CO unit back. Here I think I'm winning. But eventually... Oh no, he doesn't move it away. I thought he would move into attack. I probably would have done that. Like, if the... Uh, Wasteland. Two move. I think he would. I think I would have. I think he would have been uh, in range to go in and attack this battle cop there because that's uh, already value. Uh, anti airs are seven thousand in this game, unlike uh, eight thousand in advanced in the Advanced Wars trilogy. If he attacks here, he will get two defense. And he will be out of range of my uh, my anti-air. I'm sorry, my <laughs> artillery. Oh no, I'm starting to sound like DJs here. Moves the bike on the city and just hides all of his units up here. This is a tank. Tank, bike. Turn 11. 
Yeah, I'm behind by one in funds and behind by three units. My CO zone is at six, so I am almost a third of the way there. I built a recon just to maybe challenge all these bikes that I saw. Get the first strike up here. Uh, and I try to block with my with my bike. Copter moves in. Does almost nothing. Artillery's hidden. And uh, hopefully it uh, attacks anything that tries to uh, attack my copter or anything. But he has a flare. And most likely might spot me out. Flares are strong. Flares at the top, flares here. He sees everything. Oh man, it's uh it's not going good. Uh tank attacks here. Tank moves up, gets the first strike on this. Kills my recon. Proceeds to heal his tank, kills off my bike. But uh it at least looks like I might be able to even out the cap even out the income he builds a, another anti-air tanks and a flare pulls his bike back yeah i will be able to even out the income but i'm still behind on units all right let's see here so my recon comes out does nothing try to get some points on my uh tank artillery takes out the flare i think this is a I kind of see this as an opportunity to move in. It's like, yeah, move and see what happens. Although I think I should have... I could have done a little bit better with the anti-tank. I try to get uh, more strikes on this tank. Tank moves in. Bike is holding the choke point, And I buy a medium tank. So I, I tech up in the hopes of possibly holding off against all these... Uh, all these tanks, like, holy crap. Tank goes back to heal. Fresh tank moves up right near his base. Takes out two of mine and the bike. Allows this tank to come in. Uh, do whatever you want. Anti-air, obviously strong against the foot soldiers. Flare comes in. I do have this in range though. But I have no way to spot it out. Produces another artillery. I mean, um, produces an artillery and bikes. Artillery, anti-air. Why is that so hard? So I attack from the city, and I think I'm having an advantage. I also move my uh, medium tank up against his two and a half tanks and an artillery. Yeah, I get some uh, get some action going on here uh, at the bottom. Eight more points, and I can increase my zone. Anti-tank uh, in the zone, obviously going to be super powerful. His tank down here has just been chilling. I kind of leave the city exposed, so I was like, come on, you want to try to get the city? Come get it, I have something to stop you. But I have almost nothing to stop this. <laughs> oh, this was, this was horrible. And he gets a flare in a really nice spot. It's next to a city, so he could just move back, resupply, come back, and just do whatever. Probably be buying blind for a little bit. But yeah, here I try to have a little death ball going. Got a recon in front to scout and protect my tank. Artillery and anti-tank. They could protect each other. I leave something on the mountain to protect my comp tower. Artillery. I use it to... I use it... This... This... Don't use artillery like this. Well, maybe to interrupt the capture? Probably? But um, when you're using artillery and fog, you don't really want to show where they are uh, until they have a battlecopter in range, and that's when you can punish to get that valuable trade. So I decided to try to heal my tank while uh, getting that um, advantage and anti-tank artillery, both in range. Anything comes by, something bad can happen. Flare, battlecopter, bike. He's gonna get this top city. Flares out the whole thing here. Flares this out too. Anti-tank doing work. Buffed anti-tank actually. Tabitha CO just one shots. He's at 27. Just like almost like one turn of combat anything. And he can increase it to one. 
puts the uh, anti-air anti-air in the force. I said it right this time. And yeah, he has his strong side is a lot better than my strong side, obviously. Transport, bike, flare. Probably he already has two flares. One in the middle, one in the top. About to put a third one on the bottom. Right now it is turn 15. Uh, his units double mine. And he has two more buildings than me. I think you could probably kind of see where this is going. Anti-tank doing work. Artillery doing its best to protect. I, I try, like I said, I tried to make my own little death ball here. Battlecopter moves in. Uh, hopefully to get something going, but we got a little something else here too. I produce a tank and anti-air because I'm expecting air units. This is his only air unit, this late in the game. Flares out everything. Anti-tank trying his best. Uh, this tank is trying his best. Wait, did it say capture a building? Yeah, yeah, this, this is bad. Four more income than me. Anti-air, anti-tank still stands. Got both of his tanks on the bottom. Moves in. He's not moving his, uh, anti-air. Because nothing is close by. Yeah, they completely wrecked this one tank. So that's 12,000 funds down the drain. For Texas artillery. Oh man, yeah, this is, uh, it's got, got a non CO unit death ball here. A tank, a half full tank at level 5. Turn 16, how can I turn this around? I flare out everything. But. Hold on, my light looks different. There we go. I flare out everything but the anti-air. So I get this kill, obviously. Keep everything in range. Try to get the bonus, but it's literally right next to the anti-air. I find a CO unit. I hide my anti-air in the city. Possibly expecting a battlecopter to come here somewhere. Uh, get this nice strike on the tank, and I tech up again. I buy an infantry? Uh, turn 16. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, now he's, uh, increased his zone. This thing's just been one shotting things left and right. I really ought to give Tabitha a try. She, she looks fun to use. And here, he's just getting all the good first strikes. Down here. Doesn't get that one, unfortunately. Traps my bike. And captures my city. Possibly will get in three turns. My CO zone is huge, right? Um, ish, I think it's at the 60. Tank, now he builds his battlecopter. He hasn't spotted this yet. Produces a mech and an infantry. Uh, my turn. I finally have my 60 on turn 17. I feel like this is a chance that I could probably turn something around. I start, this should heal. And um, I just move it back, and I move this up. I see everything now. Get good shots off that anti-air. Hold on, wait. Just listen to this. Oh man, Days of Ruin CO power theme is amazing. Although up here it says Super CO power, but in Days of Ruin you only have one power. But yeah, I have vision on half of the map right now. Luckily enough, this is still hidden. And uh, like I said, when you just move around, you could just see. Uh, when you just move around, you could just see what you drive by, and my vision range is increased by two. So you could say I have a big portion of the map visible, but I have nothing in response for most of what's here. And he has good threats back here as well. Mech right here and just plops it in front. I retreat my bike just to protect my city. I go for this tank, and I try to kill it with my uh, anti-air. Put my flare up here, assuming that only one unit will attack this. But my side covers are weak as hell. <sighs> Excuse me. It's like 11.30 at night. Um, yeah. Kills uh, my anti-tank, and he's got 
foot soldiers marching on my doorstep. And he's got empowered tanks from just one seal zone. Only this mech is in range of this artillery. They all have the uh they all have the buff though, but I probably would have died. Um had I not this tank probably would have died had I not um I had my super. Balicopter moves in a great position. My anti-air is down here. Um Mac I'm sorry, tank, bike, bike. It is now turn 18. I try to try to kill it. I don't know how I managed that. I, I joined I joined it back. And you, as you can see, my CO zone is at one. Back to default again because that's what happens after you use your points. You go back to zero and whatever. Artillery is in range of two tanks. I try to get an anti-air, trying to protect my HQ because that's what I ought to do right now. He captures another building, launches a flare somewhere. Uh, I was seeing. 20 buildings to my 14 and he's got 49 energy and more than double my units oh yeah he flares this tank can spot out the uh i'm sorry balicopter can spot out the tank on my hq he can just heal this next turn get some nice cover he's already strong with like it's like 80 defense Two from the cities, um, 60 from the, uh, I'm sorry, 60 from the uh, CO power. But yeah, he's just overwhelming me right now. Uh, I think uh, he did a, m looks like we're nearing the end of our turn here. Uh, I think I do a couple more moves before I resign. So, uh, final thoughts on um, on this game. My opponent definitely um, played uh, more aggressively. Uh, I could have probably been more aggressive as well. Uh, he had a really good strong side that took over my, my weak side. And he defended his uh, uh, weaker side very very well, I would say. <sighs> Excuse me. Despite having a CO unit down here, it, it just hung around uh, until it built up, just one-shotting everything. Which is uh, not too bad if you're either offensive or defensive. But uh, yeah, I made too many early game mistakes and it just snowballed out of control to give my opponent the victory. But uh, yeah, that will... Music still playing. <laughs> that will do it for me. Oh wait, oh, no, no, oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, my uh, my second uh, face cam. One I have planned for live streams, uh, if I ever have the time to do so. But yeah, um, like I said, too many early game mistakes by me. I didn't play uh, aggressive enough. Uh, made a couple minor mistakes. I think I was making a lot of reactionary uh, mistakes as well. My opponent, good on him. Really good, uh, really good offensive side. And although I lost, I think uh, I think I did well. Um, for this video to showcase the fog mechanics uh, of this game. I think they are uh, really interesting, uh, different from the original trilogy, uh, Advanced Wars, not Star Wars. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my minor early game mistakes and I got to showcase the fog mechanics of Days of Ruin. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this replay commentary. I will definitely try to get out more and if I don't have another video uh, out by tomorrow, I hope you all have a happy new year and good luck in 2022. Probably, I'm not going to say it's going to be a good year, but you can make it, you could try to make it better for yourself as I've been trying uh, personally. This has been Advanced Warrior. You all have my warmest regards. Please take care.